Hey guys, today I want to talk about how I organize my collection a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this and everybody kind of has their own opinion on what the best way is and what the best things to use are, but this is what kind of works best for me. So, as far as how I organize, I do it by set when the release was. So, you know, base set, jungle, fossil, just going back like that. Um, as far as the cards go, I organize them by the set number, you know, where they were in the actual original set list. But a lot of times, especially when you're displaying cards in a binder like this, you'll have uh, cards that you want to have together, like obviously the, the big boys here. So I'll make adjustments to kind of how they are in the set list. I don't stick to it perfectly. As you'll see here, I kind of did... Venus or Charizard Blastoise in order by their numbers and then you just kind of start setting things up so that it looks nice when you have a fire and a water next to each other something like that and then if I don't have anything that really needs to go next to another card I'll just kind of follow the set order you know so but you'll see there's a lot of times where I kind of match things like Flareon Vaporeon and Jolteon things like that I'll just uh kind of make my own <laughs> little set list when I'm doing this stuff. So, because uh, at the end of the day, when you're flipping through the cards and kind of looking through them, that's the, the main thing you're concerned about is how they all look together. So, make small adjustments like that. Um, I used to organize my cards by types, where I would have, you know, all the trainers together, and I would then order them chronologically, but... The problem with that is, is say, I have two base set cards coming in. I need Zapdos and Gyarados still. And if I had everything, all the water cards on one page and base set would be here, and then, you know, five pages back I would have all of the XY stuff or Sun and Moon stuff, because I have a ton of cards. <laughs> but uh, if I have to add something in the very front... What happens is you have to shift every card. You have to take this one out, put it there, 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 and you end up reorganizing your whole friggin' binder if you get something that's really old. So uh, I'm always buying cards, and uh, the collection is always growing, so that was a big problem for me. So um, I ended up just kind of deciding on this way after a lot of kind of back and forth. Um... The other thing that is kind of a big thing for me is I use regular D-ring binders, and I know these get a lot of kind of a bad rap because, you know, people will not store them in a great way. They'll set them upright when they store them, and, you know, you can see the, the pages have a little bit of give, so the cards can kind of bend over time if they're sitting in there, and uh, I always store my binders laying back like this and just close them. I never set anything on top of them. If you don't have a fairly full binder with pages that are, you know, keeps it pretty much as thick as the, the binder is, um, you'll get a bunch of pressure on the edges right here. And uh, normally when that happens, I will put extra binder pages in to kind of pad it to keep it so it's thick enough that there isn't a bunch of pressure just going right here. When it's full like this, the pay, the front cover kind of just rests pretty evenly on the front of it. So um, that's not as much of a concern. But uh, the benefit of using a, a D-ring binder like this is if I decide I want to go, you see I just kind of have all the base hollows here, and then I will have uh, Gyarados and Zapdos coming in. But there are a lot of commons and stuff that I really like too, or even non-holo rares that I'm going to want from base set. So I know I'm going to be full up. This page is going to be completely full once I have uh, Zapdos and Gyarados. If I was using something like one of the portfolios, which I know are really uh, popular, and I, I like them too, but uh, for a collection that's growing constantly like this, the problem with that is if I'm butted up against all of my jungle cards that are in here in a portfolio, I can't just add a page <laughs> right in between the two. I end up having to move 
every single card in my collection back an entire page if I wanted to add more in the middle. So D-Ring Binder for an expanding collection that's just constantly growing like mine is just so much easier for when I have to reorganize everything and uh, when I get big old orders from <laughs> from Japan, I'll usually buy a few hundred singles and some booster boxes, things like that, that just kind of accumulate over time. So um, a D-ring binder is just kind of a must for, for my collection, at least. If you're not adding a whole bunch of cards to your collection very often, uh, the portfolios are really nice. You don't have to worry about if you're storing them upright or anything like that. Um, you know, they, they're they they're really nice, but if it's growing a lot, your collection, uh, D-ring binders, I feel like are kind of your best option. As far as what I use for uh, my pages, I've tried a lot of different ones. You can get kind of cheap uh, binder pages, just, you know, clear Ultra Pro ones, and those are okay, but cards fall out the top and, and things like that. These are uh, Dragon Shield binder pages, and I have not found another uh, binder page that is even close to the quality of these. They, It's hard to show on camera, but they have rounded edges. The clear plastic that's on the front goes around the edge to the next page, and it just makes it feel so nice when you're, when you're flipping through your binder. They have a kind of a textured black uh, plastic. It's the same as their matte sleeves that uh, is in the middle, so it separates the cards. Uh, they're side loading, so if you have a card in a sleeve, you slide it in there, and the card, I, they never will fall out of here. I mean, you can really shake it around and maybe get them to move around a little bit, but I don't know who's really doing that with their collections, you know? But because the top of the sleeve is right up here and the entrance to the binder page is on the side, you end up getting an extra little layer of protection so dirt and stuff can't get up in your cards and scratch the hollow and all that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as organization goes, that's kind of it. You see, I just kind of go by set. And uh, for, <laughs> for vending series, it was a little bit of a mess since there's a whole bunch of them, so I just kind of do them in chronological order. But I also put them together by types just to kind of make it all look kind of nice together because uh yeah there's a lot of different ones i'm missing a ton of vending series um and with all the gym hero stuff i just did it by type as well when you get bigger bundles of cards like this bigger sets um it looks a lot better i feel like if you do it i'd, I'd actually do it by gym leaders for for gym heroes so Brock, and then Misty, Lieutenant Surge, Erica. I just kind of do it in order like that, but I kind of clump together the types to kind of just make it all flow a little little bit better when you're flipping through it. And then, uh, you know, trainers and stuff kind of just go on the back. Uh, promos and just kind of miscellaneous cards that don't really have a set, I haven't found, like, a great way to handle those yet. Um, you'll see, I just kind of have them in between... Gen 1 and Gen 2 sets, they're kind of um, in the middle. I kind of tried to do them chronologically, but to be honest with you, it's just kind of a little all over the place. Um, the VHS deck stuff, all the kind of random promos, and then we get into all the Gen 2 stuff. Um, as far as how my binders are organized, I, I there's no way I could fit everything into one binder, so the way I have it done... For my stuff is I just kind of go through uh, E-Series in this binder and then I have a much bigger uh, binder for, uh, you know, Gen 3 and up, basically. That's just a really thick binder with lots of diamond and pearl cards, things like that. And one of the other things that I always do with my binders is the back is always kind of a part that's a little sketchy. As you can see, the the binder has a kind of a raised metal part here where the binder attaches to the actual like plastic folder part of it. And what happens is, you know, you have the little edge for the binder page here that's supposed to kind of rest on that, but sometimes it can get up 
onto where the cards are here. And I don't want a card to actually be resting on this because, you know, who knows if it's going to bend it or cause a little bit of a, uh, you know, just a divot on it depending on where it's sitting. So I always stack, uh, you know, I've, I've probably got like five or six binder pages on the back here. Just a few extra on the back so they'll take the the brunt of any of that and then the first page or the last page with any cards on it is just nice and flat it's just resting on those pages there's nothing no matter kind of how it goes it's not going to uh, be pushing or bending in a weird way so uh, that's just that's basically it I mean just a couple of tricks to kind of make d-ring binders work for me as far as the brand of D-Ring binders, to be honest with you, I don't really have a, a big preference. Um, I bought some from the Pokemon Center, and they were nice. They came with pretty cool binder pages for them, too. But uh, the problem with them is they have little plastic uh, rings that kind of latch together. They don't just clamp together. They kind of latch over one another, and what I had issues with was those clamps didn't really lock together very well so when you would flip a page it would catch on those uh, plastic rings a lot of the times and it just doesn't feel nice when you're flipping through them because I flip through this a lot and <laughs> as you know I post a lot of pictures and videos of my cards so I'm always flipping through and figuring out what I want to post next so uh, I want it to feel right when I'm looking through it all but, uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions about anything else I, I use or um, any other organizational stuff, or if you have any tips for me on, uh, you know, how you think I might be able to do this a little bit better, I also am always willing to hear that out. The info online is pretty general and broad, but if you can see kind of what my collection looks like, maybe you have a good idea for me. <laughs> so... Alright, thanks for watching guys, I appreciate you looking at it, and uh, have a good day.